Good morning to all. Guten Tag. We're very happy that you are spending precious time with us this morning. My name is Dulce Fortunado. I'm a training officer at the FSI, and it's my honor and pleasure to serve as host for today's event. Just a reminder, in case of an emergency, such as the occurrence of an earthquake, please stay calm. You shall be ushered by security officers in vacating the library to the designated evacuation area. Today is a great day to come together and learn from each other as we welcome you to the second installment of Ambassador's Lecture Series this year. Ambassador's Lecture Series, or the ALS, is a platform for heads of diplomatic missions in Manila to share their knowledge and expertise, experience, and advocacies. It aims to build stronger bridges of understanding that will lead us to insights, actions, and, deeper, and a deeper appreciation of our relations to continue achieving our shared goals of cooperation, economic development, and peace. Now allow me to have the honor to introduce our guest lecturer for this month. Ambassador Andreas Michael Fafanoschka is Germany's ambassador to the Republic of the Philippines since 17 August 2023. Ambassador Fafanoschka was ambassador of Germany to Ogadugu, Burkina Faso from 2020 to 2023. Prior to this, he was head of division in the Federal Foreign Office in Berlin from 2016 to 2020. Since joining the Federal Foreign Office in 1990, he has served in various capacities on issues related to Europe, international organizations, and Sub-Saharan Africa. He graduated with a master's degree in economics, and he subsequently obtained a PhD in economics in 1990. He is married with four children. To share his thoughts on his chosen topic, Germany's interests in the Indo-Pacific region, may call on stage from the Embassy of Germany in the Philippines, Ambassador Dr. Andreas Michael Fafanoschka. Let's give him a warm round of applause. Thank you so much for this warm welcome, excellencies, Dear participants, colleagues, friends from the DFA, friends from the media, friends from the diplomatic community, friends of Germany, let me start by expressing my deep gratitude to the Foreign Service Institute and its president, dear Francisco, for this kind invitation and allowing me to share some thoughts on Germany's interests in the Indo-Pacific region. And it will not come as a surprise to you that I will particularly highlight Germany's interest in the Philippines. Let me start by briefly recalling some recent events underlining the importance of our relations and the interest Germany has in a very dynamic and important Indo-Pacific region. Just recently on January 11 and 12, Germany's Federal Foreign Minister, Annalena Baerbock, visited the Philippines, as well as Malaysia and Singapore. And I'm very proud to say that she spent more than two-thirds of her time in the region, in the Philippines. It was the first visit of a German Federal Foreign Minister to the Philippines in more than 10 years, and to Malaysia in more than 15 years. Only last month, our federal president, Frank-Walter Steinmeier, some of you might also refer to him as one of our former foreign ministers, which he was indeed twice in his career, paid an official visit to Vietnam, emphasizing again the growing importance of the Indo-Pacific region for Germany. And only two weeks ago, on February 1st and 2nd, ASEAN countries and the EU member states convened for the 24th EU ASEAN Ministerial Meeting in Brussels, co-chaired by His Excellency Enrique Manalo in his quality as the coordinator for EU ASEAN dialogue relations on the ASEAN side, together with the EU High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Vice President of the European Commission, His Excellency Josep Borrell. At this meeting, ASEAN and the EU noted with satisfaction the comprehensive and multifaceted nature 
of our partnership and reaffirmed our strategic partnership and our shared interest in keeping our regions peaceful, stable and prosperous and in upholding and respecting international law and the rules-based international order based on adherence to international law and in maintaining peace, security and stability. And as you all know, on March 12th, 13th, so in four weeks approximately, His, Excell His Excellency President Ferdinand Marcus Jr. will visit Germany. And he will meet with Federal Chancellor Scholz and the German business community. Let me say how honored and glad we are to have him in our country. Can you imagine a stronger signal for our enhanced partnership and cooperation? In my view, this visit will underpin very clearly our common interest to further strengthen our relations in this very year, 2024, in which we will also celebrate 70 years of diplomatic relations between our countries and definitely more than 70 years of a strong partnership. Ladies and gentlemen, the Indo-Pacific region is a region on the rise, a region with thriving economic markets that are booming, with a young and skilled workforce hungry for innovation and prosperity, with regional organizations like ASEAN striving to achieve peace and security in the, re in the region. Let me benefit from this occasion today also to thank the Philippines for their leadership in coordinating EU-ASEAN relations and the very constructive role played by the Philippines just recently in coming to an agreement on the EU-ASEAN joint ministerial declaration two weeks ago. Let me divide my presentation in three chapters, defining in more detail the German interest in the region. First chapter will be on safeguarding peace and security and the international rules-based order. The second on promoting economic relations and the third on promoting sustainable development goals and fighting climate change. Let me start with the first chapter, peace and security and the international rules-based order. Dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, the Indo-Pacific region will determine, perhaps more than any other place in the world, the future of the international, international order for the century to come. That is why I value very much this opportunity to talk about our perspective on the region. And the Philippines, if I may say so, so are in the middle of it. Ladies and gentlemen, Russia's brutal war of aggression against Ukraine, violating international rules, and using military violence against a peaceful country continues to permanently challenge the international order since almost two years now. On February 24, 2022, Almost two years ago, the Russian war against Ukraine started. And it has changed international politics, particularly from a European perspective. Peace in Europe, taken almost for granted since the end of the Cold War, is over. And it underlined in the strongest possible terms the need for strong international alliances to protect and defend the international rules-based order. And it is because of Russia's war against Ukraine that Germany remains very firm in our commitment to the Indo-Pacific and in defending the international rules-based order. We stay firm in defending the international order in Europe and in the Indo-Pacific region and everywhere else in the world, together with our friends and partners. We trust to have reliable partners in the Indo-Pacific sharing the same interest with us. The recent initiative by Secretary Manello to create a group of friends of international law where Germany has the honor to be a member is proof of the like-mindedness of the Philippines and Germany in this respect. And it encourages us to further engage ourselves in this region, also with other partners, to build on alliances 
for peace and security. But it is, of course, much more than Russia's war against Ukraine that endangers the international rules-based order. Also, in the Indo-Pacific, we see increasing geopolitical tensions and open rivalries between powers. There are numerous disputed boundaries and cross-border conflicts, as well as networks of regional and international terrorism that can have a negative impact on global and regional stability. Recent events in the South China Sea have shown us how fragile the situation is and how important it is to find lasting solutions for peace and stability in the region. Ladies and gentlemen, disputes around land claims and territorial sover sovereignty, as well as excessive maritime claims, are not new. But here in the region, they are becoming increasingly tense, and the prospect of violent escalation in ri is rising with the building up of military infrastructure and dangerous encounters on the open sea. Again and again, Germany had clearly expressed its legal position on the South China Sea and supported the 2016 Arbitral Award. The Arbitral Award is legally binding on all parties and on CLOS. It should guide the conduct, conduct of all parties in the South China Sea. Germany, therefore, repeatedly expressed our concern on the dangerous maneuvers and actions of Chinese Coast Guard boats against resupply missions to Sierra Madre at the Ayungin Shoal, as well as against fishermen at different places in the South China Sea, and recently on Scarborough Shelf. The Philippines can continue to count on Germany in asserting its rights under international law. We are close partners and allies on that. Germany will continue to speak out strongly against violations of any country's sovereign rights under the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. The Indo-Pacific region is key when it comes to safeguarding the rules-based international order, and we German have a very strong interest in maintaining and strengthening this order together with our friends from the Indo-Pacific region. Let me also say that supporting the Philippine position and the international legal order in the South China Sea is not only a one-way street. As we have supported the Philippines on many occasions with clear statements on the South China Sea issue and will continue to do so, Germany would also very much appreciate a clear statement from our Philippine friends on February 24th this year, the day Russia invaded Ukraine two years ago. I think this is what partners who are joining efforts to defend the international rules-based order can expect from each other. And I know that the war in Ukraine is also of great concern to the Philippines and many other countries in the Indo-Pacific region. And the German government welcomes the clear-cut position taken by the Philippine government in this respect. Ladies and gentlemen, Germany, more than 10,000 kilometers away from the Philippines, is definitely not an Indo-Pacific military power, and we do have no intention to become one. We have no permanent military presence in this region, and we are not striving for it. Our presence in the region is focused on Europe's role as a partner interested in defending the international rules-based order and in promoting mutually advantageous economic relations. We do this as a member of the European Union and we align ourselves fully with the EU strategy for the Indo-Pacific. Peaceful settlement of conflicts and promotion of mechanisms for peace and stability are at the core of our engagement in this region. But Germany also does step up our efforts to strengthen capacities of concerned countries to preserve the rules-based international order. In fact, we further increased our support to the Philippine Coast Guard 
in enhancing its maritime surveillance capacities, and we will provide 1.5 million euros for this purpose. And we will also continue our participation in multilateral exercises in the region. We are planning a port call in Manila this year by a German Navy ship at the occasion of the 70 years of diplomatic relations, and I'm very happy that this will be implemented probably in autumn this year. All these are, ladies and gentlemen, concrete measures underpinning our strong interest in the region with a view to protect the international rules-based order. Let me come to my second point, promoting economic relations as another key interest of Germany in the region. Germany, as you all know, is a trading nation and an economic powerhouse. Millions of jobs in Germany depend on our trade with other countries. A large part of the world's foreign trade is conducted via the Indian and Pacific Ocean. Up to 25% of the world's maritime trade passes through the Strait of Malacca. More than 2,000 ships a day transport goods between the Indian Ocean and the South China Sea through this bottleneck. A disruption of these maritime trade routes and thus the supply chains and to and from Europe would have serious consequences for the prosperity of and the provision for our population. That is why open shipping routes are so important. And that is one reason why we have every reason to intensify our relations with the Pacific region. And this, of course, is also closely interconnected with the geopolitical and strategic interest I had talked about in the first chapter of my presentation. Only the respect of the international order can guarantee safe and reliable shipping routes. Ladies and gentlemen, the share of countries in the Indo-Pacific region in Germany's trade in goods has risen steadily in the past decades and now amounts to over 20% of our overall trade. Direct investment in the region has been growing in relation to total German foreign investment. Millions of jobs in Germany depend on these trade and investment relations. In view of this great potential, Germany has a vital interest in open and transparent markets in the Indo-Pacific region. The federal government firmly believes that rules-based free trade enhances prosperity worldwide. It supports efforts to strengthen the multilateral trading system with the, with the WTO at its center, as well as inclusive and sustainable free trade agreements in the Indo-Pacific region. That is why we also particularly welcome the decision of the EU Commission to relaunch the negotiations on the free trade agreement with the Philippines as soon as possible. Talking more specifically about the Philippines, Germany is the biggest trading partner of the Philippines within the EU and the first country when it comes to foreign direct investment. That is why we share every interest in an Indo-Pacific region which is peaceful, where common rules are respected and where every country is free to determine its future in making independent political and economic choices. Dear friends, approximately 300 German companies are active in the Philippines, and you all know them. Lufthansa, Mercedes, Siemens, Porsche, Bayer, Merck, Thyssen, Allianz, just to name a few, there are many more. From BPO to manufacturing, from services to pharmaceuticals, German companies are engaged on a broad range of sectors and there's definitely potential for more. Germany is diversifying its economic relations and is looking for new and reliable partners. I understand that the same is valid and goes for the Philippines. So this matches very well Germany's interest and the Philippine interests. Germany learned the hard way what it means to be too dependent 
on one big partner. Economic security and de-risking is our joint catchword, a catchword which is guiding German foreign trade policy, and they also understand foreign policy of the Philippines and many other countries in the region. In this regard, the Indo-Pacific region is very promising. There are skilled labor force, there are partners with shared values, and increasing openness for foreign investment. The German government, as well as, as the German business community, follow with great attention and a lot of sympathy the efforts of the administration of President Marcus Jr. to improve the investment and business climate in the country. Red carpet instead of red tape. This is the right motto, which I'm hearing more and more often. And I congratulate also from this podium here Special Advisor Frederick Goh and Arthur Secretary Paris for all their efforts in this regards. Yes, indeed, the ease of doing business index in the Philippines can be improved. Positioning the Philippines as an interesting investment and business hub is a huge challenge given the international competition for foreign capital. And it is much more than just making business easier. It is about sustainable and enduring efforts to improve the image and performance of a country as a safe and reliable haven for foreign investors. It is about current and future political stability and trust, and it is about the rule of law in commercial affairs. By the way, discussions about secession of an important part of a country will definitely not increase trust and confidence of investors. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot talk about our interest in the region without mentioning the legal migration of skilled workers to Germany. More than 10,000 healthcare workers from the Philippines already do work in Germany under reliable and very good conditions and on equal footing. No discrimination, treated as every other worker, including German nationals. And Germany has a huge interest in not only further increasing their number, but also in widening the scope to other skills, like mechanics, automotive workers, and others. A joint declaration of intent in this respect has been signed by Federal Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock and the officer in charge of the DMW, Hans Kaktak, on January 11. This joint declaration identifies areas for further cooperation and stated the interest of both sides to explore the conclusion of a comprehensive migration and mobility partnership agreement to further facilitate labor migration and to expand our cooperation in training and capacity building. And I'm very hopeful that we will be able to conclude this agreement in the month to come. Ladies and gentlemen, let me come to the third point of my little presentation, promoting sustainable development goals and fighting climate change as a key interest of Germany in the Indo-Pacific region. The global international order is not only threatened by wars and conflict. Among the global challenges confronting the Indo-Pacific region, climate change and the loss of biodiversity are among the most prominent ones. Rising sea levels and an increase in extreme weather events are particularly serious problems for the region. And, and this you know much better than me, because many of you already experienced the devastating power of climate change, the Philippines are among the most seriously affected countries by climate change in the world. No other region in the world has so many people directly affected by the rise in sea levels. The Philippines and other Southeast Asian nations are among the 10 states most affected by extreme weather events in the past 20 years. Droughts and changes in precipitation patterns are also having a particularly severe impact on the region in which agriculture 
is an important employment factor. The El Nino phenomenon, which we already witnessed today here in Luzon, is very real and a threat to agricultural production and thereby the survival of people. In addition, climate change often has adverse effects on poverty reduction efforts and food security, sustainable employment, and the restoration of an intact environment. Climate change in the Indo-Pacific also has increasing security policy implications. A risk multiplier, as a risk multiplier, it can fuel or exacerbate conflicts. This creates new foreign development policy challenges. Conflicts over spheres of influence and resources, as well as failed harvests, may trigger destruction and famine. In an interconnected world where the effects of climate change do concern all of us, it is Germany's firm interest to reduce these adverse effects in the interest of our own security. Germany, since decades, is a vocal partner advocating sustainable development and responding to the challenges posed by climate change. At the COP28 recently, Germany and the Philippines worked very closely together to achieve progress and contributed to a positive outcome of the conference. Through the International Climate Initiative, Germany, the German government, supports projects all over the Indo-Pacific region and of course also in the Philippines to tackle climate change with an amount of over 50 million euros alone in the Philippines. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> we have launched climate consultations with the Philippines last year and we will continue to do that this year. Thank you. Both countries, Germany and the Philippines, are board members of the newly created Loss and Damage Fund, and Germany is carefully studying the generous offer of the Philippines to host the Secretariat of the Fund. Ladies and gentlemen, Germany is committed to multilateral solutions. Our interest is to ensure the resilience of ecosystems and societies in order to ensure the stability of the whole global order. Preserving biodiversity in the Indo-Pacific region, therefore, is in all our global interest, from an economic and social, but I'm convinced also from a moral perspective. Finally, let me also say some words on human rights. Dear friends, we are convinced that the stability of a society, the credibility of a country as an advocate of a rules-based order and its attractiveness as a business and investment destination is also closely linked to its human rights record. Germany, and you can please believe me in light of our tragic history and our own experience with human rights violations under the terrible dictatorship of the Nazi regime, is a very prominent defender of human rights and the rule of law worldwide. We therefore have every interest in supporting every country in the Indo-Pacific region in promoting and protecting human rights. We are deeply convinced that political systems which respects and promotes human rights are much more stable than any other political system. And for the reasons outlined above, stable and rules-based international order, flourishing economic relations, and sustainable development, a good human rights record in every country in the Indo-Pacific region is very much in our own interest. Let me congratulate the Philippine government for all its efforts to improve the human rights situation in the country. Germany stands ready for a dialogue on how to cooperate further on improving the human rights situations in the country and in the region in the future. Before concluding, let me thank you all again, and particularly the Foreign Service Institute for inviting me, for giving me the opportunity to talk to you, to outline to you some of Germany's interests in the regions. 
I thank you very much for your patience in listening to me and my lecture. I hope I respected the time frame more or less, and I will hope I was able to explain to you some key interests of Germany in the region. And now I understand I'm looking forward to an interesting discussion with all of you, and of course I'm looking forward to a successful year celebrating 70 years of diplomatic relations between the Federal Republic of Germany and the Republic of the Philippines. Thank you, Maraming Salamat, and uh, yeah, looking forward to discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Pafanoshka, for all the points that you raised and the discussion that's about to come. 70 years of uh, relations, that's like two old friends. So now we're going to, as uh, mentioned, we're going to open the floor now for some discussion, exchange as this platform, the Ambassador's Lecture Series, is set for. Just a few reminders, uh, please be brief with your comments and questions so we can entertain a good number. And please do remember to introduce yourself, your organization or affiliation before your comment or question. So let's begin. Just raise your hand, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You may approach our two microphones there at the center. Yes. Also. So thank you very much. Congratulations, Ambassador. I really appreciate. Um, I have just one question, maybe two questions. The first one, you mentioned uh, climate change consultations. If you could elaborate a little bit more, I mean, uh, what, I mean, more specifically, how is a, is a new platform? Are you working on very spe specific areas? And the question number two, concerning the Asian Development Bank, uh, Germany and the Philippines are working also with ADB, because I know that, I mean, they have, I'm speaking uh, within the G20, I know that the bank is, is trying also to be, uh, to be involved in climate change. Well, the question I pose, because Brazil is, is leading very much in this area of environment, and uh, we're looking forward to the COP30 in, in the Amazon. Thank you very much. Shall I answer directly? Yes. Okay. Or shall we collect? No. Thank you very much um, to my Brazilian colleague for, for the two questions. Very much appreciated. The first on the climate consultations. Yes, we created with our Philippine friends this format last year uh, to exchange very general first on our international cooperation in climate change. And I, and I just said that in COP28 that only already paid off because we cooperated very closely in the COP28 to come to a successful conclusion. So consultations uh, which go about our individual views on climate change, on where we are in the international climate change discussion is one thing. And then, of course, about concrete projects, how we can cooperate in order to tackle climate change. And I have referred myself to uh, the International Climate Initiative of the Federal Ministry of, of uh, Climate Protection and Economy, and Economy um, where we work very closely with the Philippines also on projects. We will, we hope with our Philippine friends, we will have the second round at the, at the second half of this year in Berlin, uh, but let me, let me take this up with my Filipino colleagues before we come to more concrete results on that. But yes, we intend this to be regular consultations exchanging about the national climate policy and concrete measures how to tackle climate change in our respective countries. And the second on the Asian Development Bank, uh, yes, I just had the chance yesterday to have a long discussion with colleagues at the ADB. Germany, as you know, is a stakeholder in the ADB with 4.4% of the capital of ADB held by, by Germany. Uh, we have one executive director in the ADB, and I understand ADB is very closely working not only with the German government, but also and mainly here with the Filipino government on energy transition mechanisms, on infrastructure projects. I learned yesterday that it is really a privilege for the Philippines, I think, that, Manila, that in Manila we have the ADB, because that helps a lot to have projects in this very country, and that helps very much 
to also help the Philippine government to tackle the challenges linked to infrastructure, etc. So uh, yes, we work closely with the ADB, and um, my impression is that this is to the mutual benefit of all partners. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good morning, and uh, thank you so much, His Excellency Ambassador. Uh, my name is uh, Amnot. I'm from the Embassy of Cambodia. So uh, I, did le I did learn uh, something from your presentation, and it is uh, very informative. My question is, uh, what could be the factors that harmful to Germany interest in uh, the region? And how are you going to deal with those factors? Thank you. Yes, thank you very much for the question. I mean, the interests are as they are. Uh, and the interests will definitely not be influenced by, by events. The interests, as I outlined, are stable and will continue to be our interests. How we can achieve these interests, how we can uh, implement these interests, that's indeed is the question, yes. And we can all imagine events, incidents, that can occur in this region which will harm our interest. Let's talk about the South China Sea, of course. If I talk about the international order and stability in the region, and we see events which are doing harm, as you said, to the international stability, to the stability in the region, this hurts our interests. That's why we are so vocal in defending the international order and making clear that every attempt to, to put into danger the international order is against our interests. So yes, we can imagine uh, also on the fields of economic relations, we can imagine that uh, the business climate in the region is going down, that would affect our interests very, very clearly. We can imagine uh, conflicts between countries in the region. We can even imagine a trade war here and there, which would, of course, seriously affect our, our interests. But that is why we are not only strengthening our relations with all countries in this region in order to avoid exactly these events from happening, um, but also advocating on the international level for the international rules-based order and to talk with all countries, um, all respective countries in the region in order to avoid that these harmful events uh, might happen. I mean, harmful events, we, as I just referred to the Russian aggression against Ukraine, we had this very harmful event which Believe me, for us in Europe, it, it, it was a shock. It still is a shock. It, as I said, put the international order completely um, from in question. And this is definitely one of the harmful, uh, the most harmful events we could imagine in, in Europe. We hope that harmful events of that quality will not happen in this region. But we put every effort with our partners uh, in the region, including the Philippines, into avoiding these harmful effects from happening. I hope this answers the question. We cannot foresee the future, unfortunately. We can only try our best today in order to avoid harmful effects come from happening. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Guten Morgen, leader, Herbo chapter. Um, my name is Noel Serbigon. I'm an assistant secretary here at the Department of Foreign Affairs. Uh, when I saw the topic about interest in the Indo-Pacific region, I immediately thought of your historical interest here in the region. As uh, history majors would remember, uh, Germany was uh, almost took over the Philippines in 1898 after the Spanish-American War. In fact, uh, I have a clipping, an old clipping of newspaper from my home city, which is Iloilo in Central Philippines, that there was a German battleship waiting at outside uh, for the signal to, to come in uh, when the Spaniards left. There was an imperial on consulate of Germany there in my city more than 100 years ago. So my question is about uh, your cultural interest here. Many of us know that uh, there was an expansive German uh, colonial empire in the Western Pacific that included the Marianas, the Carolinas, 
And uh, I don't know if you are also the concurrent ambassador to these uh, countries like Palau or Micronesia, which used to be German colonies, except for Guam, which the Americans uh, retained. The rest were sold by Spain to uh, Germany during the uh, after the war. So again, my question is about your cultural uh, plans on how you would uh, promote the uh, German interest here and uh, interest by the Filipinos or maybe by the Pacific count countries and uh, to know more about uh, a country, although it's colonial, no? it was uh, in colonial intent, but now maybe with economic or cultural intentions, uh, which had an, an historic, a historical uh, interest in this region more than a century ago. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for the question. Um, history is history. Um, indeed, Germany had its colonies here, and yes, I can confirm that I am also the German ambassador to Palau, to the Federated States of Micronesia, and to Marshall Islands, although I had not yet had the chance to hand over my credentials in Micronesia and Marshall Islands, so so far I'm only a full-fledged ambassador in Palau. But yes, there is a colonial history which is really part of the past, but which continues to, to keep us busy until today. That concerns, for example, to give you a concrete example in Palau, we are working with the Palauan government to bring back um, decorations, even, even human, human, human remains that have been taken away from Palau under German colonial times um, and are now go bring, bring, being brought back to Palau to give them the rest they deserve. To have a memorial also for what has been done under German colonial times in Palau. So that is definitely part of our cultural cooperation with Palau. Cultural cooperation with the region is the general cultural cooperation we are trying to promote, I would say, everywhere in the world, which is German culture and German language, and academic exchange very much. So the German language is a language which is, I admit, difficult to learn. Nevertheless, I'm always admiring all people who are doing that, who are trying to learn German. I'm also and always very much impressed how many people I meet here who speak German, because they have been to Germany, they have friends in Germany, they have colleagues from their family working as migrant workers in Germany, so it's always a pleasure and a big experience for me to see how many people learn German here. I would love to do more. We are working and exploring also ways with our cultural institute, what we can do in order to enhance uh, the cultural cooperation. Cultural cooperation is not only language. Cultural cooperation is much more um, as I said, music, I also learned that German composers are very famous here. German music is famous here. Filipinos love music in general, so they also love German music. We can do much more to promote that. And cultural relations are also about academic exchange. And of course, I'm also very impressed how many Filipino students, many go to the US, many go to other countries because of the language. But as in Germany, we also do have English language teaching, so universities also do courses in English, so the chance for, for students from the region to go to Germany in order to, to improve their academic uh, level and an exchange of students also coming here to the Philippines is definitely on the agenda. So we try to work on the broad range of cultural um, relations, cultural things. Um, sorry that I did not mention that in my presentation, but I had to leave out something, otherwise I would have been talking too long. Um, if that answers your question, if not, we can definitely follow up bilaterally. Thank you. Thank you. Madam, please. And then, uh, sir. Hi, guten tag. Ich bin Malu Bartolome from Business Mirror. That's all the German that I can remember, Ambassador. 
Yeah. Um, can I just clarify what you mentioned earlier during your speech? You mentioned that um, current developments on uh, in the Philippines. I, uh, is, were you referring to the efforts to change the constitution that somehow diminishes the trust on doing business in the Philippines? Can you just clarify that, Mr. Ambassador? Thank you. No, I, 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 I didn't refer to the Chacha, but I referred to efforts to segregate parts of the country. And I clearly said that any discussion or even serious discussion to segregation, to divide parts of the country from the Philippines is harmful to economic interests. So I was not referring to the Chacha discussion. I was only referring to, well, this part of recent discussions in the country you're all aware of. Again, sir, uh, Michael Mago from the Foreign Service Institute. Now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's, uh, there's this stereotype, uh, which is Germany is the home of bureaucracy, which is something that which we're also very familiar here in the Philippines. Now, I don't know if uh, it's included in your Indo-Pacific strategy, but could you give us an overview of the uh, strides that Germany is taking in terms of digitalization and innovation, uh, especially in terms of uh, uh, providing government services. I'm sure we can learn a lot from you. Thank you. Uh, this strides that uh, Germany is taking in terms of digitalization and innovation, uh, especially in terms of uh, providing government services. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Indeed, digitalization is a big issue. And if I got you correctly, you define Germany as the home of bureaucracy. Um, I will not comment on that. I <laughs> think other countries have also a huge record when it comes to bureaucracy, by, but I'm, I'm happy to admit that I would also love to see German bureaucracy being lighter and smarter and digitalization being much more um, in the forefront than it is now. Yes, we have a lot of things to do in our own country. Digitalization is essential for a successful economy, and Germany is definitely lagging behind, particularly other countries in Europe, which are far more ahead when it comes to digitalization government services than in Germany. In Germany, if you want to register your car, you still have to go there. You have to wait two hours. It's better in the Philippines here, I hope. Um, so uh, we have a lot to do in digitalization. So I would not dare to say here that Germany is the partner who is able to help our Indo-Pacific friends when it comes to more effectively digitalize your public services. Although there are good examples uh, here also in the Philippines with LTO, there's a German company which is very much involved in digitalization, the, the, uh, the driver's licenses and the car plates and the car registration in this country. So yes, we have, we have good examples, but I would not be daring to say here that we are the main partner for digitalization. We have an Indo-Pacific strategy from 2020 where digitalization is part of the strategy, saying we would like to work with our Indo-Pacific partners also on improving digitalization, not only of public services, but of the society as a whole. So that is definitely something we are looking at. But uh, I understand your provocative questions also in a way that you doubt that Germany is the right partner for that. So we will try our best to, to improve on that. But we first, to come back to that, uh, we first have to prove at home that we can really make it before exporting these models to the Indo-Pacific region. Thank you. Thank you. You also have participants via our Facebook Live at our page, FSI Philippines. We'll have one after this question. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Your Excellency. I am Nicole Miranda from the Foreign Service Institute, and I have two questions for you. The first question is, how does the presence of the Filipino healthcare workers in Germany affect uh, the country's healthcare sector? And the second one is, uh, are there existing agreements between the Philippines and Germany to ensure that the Filipino healthcare workers there are being protected and cared for? Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Well, to answer the first question, the effects 
of the presence of Filipino healthcare workers in Germany, very good. I can only say very good. Um, that's why we are interested in having more Filipino healthcare workers. Filipino healthcare workers are known as being reliable, uh, very work oriented, they easily integrate in the German society. So we have only good experiences with healthcare workers from the Philippines. And uh, if I may, if I may say, we had one testimony here during the visit of my foreign minister. We had a round table on skilled workers, and we had one lady working as a healthcare worker in Germany that came here to give her testimony, and she also said she had problems in the beginning to integrate, but she's very happy, particularly with the working conditions. And as I said in my presentation, no, we have, we have no agreement with the Philippines, but we have our internal legislation in Germany, which makes very clear that there is no discrimination, there is no differentiation between foreign workers and German workers, so all are treated equal, all receive the same payment, all have the safe social security standards, the, self ex the same access to our health systems. That's why my understanding is they are happy to be in Germany. That's why we would love to have more. And that's why we are working intensively with our Filipino friends on uh, implementing this, uh, this goal. And as I said, we are also talking about an agreement to facilitate legal migration. We are looking into that more carefully, and I'm sure that will also, again, raise the legal framework which we have to do this exchange. I hope this answers your question. Thank you. Thank you. First, we'll have one from our guests uh, and viewers from our Facebook Live. This is from Luis Lomeda. Good morning, Ambassador. I am Luis, an avid viewer of FSI's lecture series. Thank you very much. The Philippines is top in the promulgation of policies and laws for the environment. For instance, the Oposa ruling is a landmark decision of the Supreme Court of the Philippines recognizing the doctrine of intergenerational responsibility for the environment in the Philippine legal system. Do you think these are being implemented well? Is there more on paper and less on the ground? Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. Um, it's a very specific question. I have to admit, before uh, what we're going on, on, on ice here, I would not answer that question because the implementation of this very specific regulation she was just referring to is something I will not be able to answer now. I'm very sorry. May we have, thank you, sir. May we have first lady and then the gentleman. Thank you. Good morning. Um, yes, excellent. Good morning. Um, Mega Wati, the Brunei Ambassador. Um, thank you, Ambassador Michael. Sorry for tiptoeing late into your presentation. Uh, but I did get a lot of, out of that. Uh, just uh, maybe just one question um, or two. Um, you, you spoke of the um, Germany's strong alignment with the EU strategy in the, in the Indo-Pacific. Uh, I was just wondering whether, you know, what, whether, you know, uh, would, is there, yeah, is there, you know, anything that is, you know, you should, you think that Germany wants to see more of or less of? And, um, how do you think you know, um, ASEAN can be helpful in that sense in supporting the EU, EU strategy? Thank you. Well, the strategy of, the, of Germany, the Indo-Pacific strategy is from 2020. The EU strategy is from 2021. Both are, of course, compatible. But both, and I think this is important to remember, have been adopted before Russia invaded Ukraine. So the world was a different one at that time. That does not mean that uh, many aspects in the strategy are no longer valid. But I think the emphasis on the international rules-based order and our cooperation on maintaining international rules-based order have, has definitely increased. The importance of that aspect has increased since the strategy was adopted. 
because the international politis, polis, politics situation has changed significantly. So intensifying our cooperation with the region in supporting the international rules-based order in New York, here in the region, everywhere in the world, has probably a much more prominent status now than it had three years or four years ago. And that is, as I mentioned, I don't know whether you have already been there, that why we appreciate so much also the initiative of Foreign Secretary Manalo to create the group of Friends of International Law. This is exactly what we need, and this is exactly what we need to emphasize even more than 2020 or 21, when the international order was neither challenged by the Russian war on Ukraine nor challenged in the South China Sea in the way it is challenged now. We've seen deterioration of the situation over the last years, so that's why I would tend to say that this is the point we need to emphasize, or we would emphasize even more today than we did in 2020 and 2021. Thank you. Hope this answers your question. Well, ASEAN can of course be helpful, and ASEAN is already very helpful, because ASEAN has I also referred to the recent ministerial meeting in Brussels between ASEAN and the EU, where we agreed on common language on exactly these issues, where we came to terms and we proved, both sides proved, to be reliable partners on that. Um, so I think we are on the right path. ASEAN is already very helpful, and um, let me express my confidence that ASEAN, also in the future, will continue to be very helpful in underlining the importance of exactly that aspect, maintaining the rules-based international order. We can discuss more intensively what we can do. We can, like, like uh, Secretary Manello with his initiative, think about joint initiatives in this respect. There, we, you also might be indeed, again, helpful, but again, let me say that we are also already very pleased with the, with the response from, from ASEAN and with what we have achieved together. Thanks. Thank you. We we'll have the gentleman, then one question, anonymous here, here sent, and another. Thank you. Good morning, that Your would be Excellency. The last one. Um, I'm Francis Romines from the Foreign Service Institute. Um, Germany and the Philippines continue to face a plethora of business attacks and advance persistent threats from their gov against their government institutions every day, both from non-state and state actors. However, our difference lies at the level of our resilience and cybersecurity capabilities that our countries have. Needless, needless to say, Germany is far more capable of preventing and managing cyber attacks and pursuing cybercrime actors. And given that the security in the Indo-Pacific also touches cyberspace. Is there any, um, is there a German interest plan or strategic overture to foster cooperation with the Philippines, with the Philippines in this um, issue? Thank you. Yes, you're touching a very relevant point. Cybersecurity, I did not mention, but it is for all of us on a daily basis a threat. In the Philippines, we've just seen attacks. In Germany, we had attacks. Um, thank you very much for the trust you expressed by saying that Germany is probably better off and better disposed to react to these threats. I'm not a, uh, an expert on, on, uh, on internet security to be able to answer that, but when it comes to cooperation, a clear yes, as a clear disposal of us to work with our friends in the region to enhance cybersecurity. I can, I can tell you that uh, we recently at discussions between our both respective ministries of defense, where also cybersecurity was an issue. And uh, to my understanding, Germany and the Philippines will increase their cooperation in strengthening cybersecurity in the Philippines. So our de Department of Defense is working with your Department on Defense on that issue. So you see, um, Obviously, thanks for the trust again. There is trust on the Filipino side that Germany can be a helpful partner on that, and Germany, of course, is willing to do that. Thank you. Sir, anonymous question before the last question from the floor. How is Germany bracing for leadership transitions and elections, particularly in the US? What can you say about uh, Donald Trump's remarks that he would encourage Russia to do whatever they want to NATO allies 
that failed to meet defense spending guidelines. Thank you, sir. Does that really need a comment? Okay. Well, I think um, everything that has been said on these remarks have been said by our government. This is respectless. This shows a complete negligence of what NATO is all about as an alliance of partners who stand together. And this is bare of any responsibility. So um, we can only condemn what has been said by President Trump, by, 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 by candidate Trump, or possible candidate Trump, by Mr. Trump, I might say, uh, these, these uh, remarks on a defense alliance which have been the basis for security in Europe and in the North Atlantic region for more than 80 years are completely groundless. And uh, as I said, they do even not conserve, uh, deserve any comment. When it comes to elections in November, we will see. Um, I think this is not the place to express Germany's things about, thoughts about how we would like the elections to be done. We hope they are fair democratic and free, and well, then we have to respect the result of these elections, however and however they will be. Thanks. Thank you. Our last question from the floor. Thank you very much. Hello. Good morning, Ambassador. Uh, this is NG Chen of the Central News Agency. Uh, sir, I would like to ask that uh, is does Germany consider to sign a visiting force agreement with the Philippines so that you can also have uh, military exercise in the Philippines? Thank you. Thank you very much. This is something which would be based on a request from the Filipino side. Then we would study that question. As far as I know, there is no wish from the Filipino side so far to do that. And as I had said in my presentation, Germany is not and has no intentions to become military power in this very region, in the Indo-Pacific region. So I very much do understand that for our Filipino friends and the friends in the region, other partners in the region which are present in the region are much more interested and attractive partners for a standing forces agreement. But as I said, if we would request, if we would receive a, a request in this regard, we would definitely carefully study that and we would see that as a proof of the quality of our relations. Thank you. Thank you very much for all your act, uh, questions and active participation. To close our forum, maybe we can hear the ambassador for his uh, closing statement or final note. Well, I'm not prepared for a closing statement, but let me do that, yes. I can, is a, sorry? Or just like an invitation just to the activities of the 70th anniversary. Yeah, of course, thank you. Thank you very much. No, first of all, let me thank all of you for the active participation. Let me thank all of you for the interest you have demonstrated, you have shown with your presence here today. It is an honor for me to be here to speak to such, an, uh, to such a high level forum, to such a high level uh, audience, and to have the opportunity to present my thoughts on Germany's interest in the region. Uh, again, yes, indeed, 70 years of diplomatic relations. We have a very special year with the Philippines. We will celebrate. We will have the president in Germany in roughly five weeks. So also this, or four weeks only, this all shows the quality of our relations. And um, I can only encourage you to participate to the event possible in everything we are going to organize during these 70 years celebration of diplomatic relations. I would encourage on and ensure you again that Germany is and will remain a very reliable partner for the Philippines. And I thank you all for the trust you put in Germany as a partner in this region. We will try our best not to disappoint your, uh, your, your, your hopes and your expectations. 
and I'm sure with our friends in DFA, we will definitely continue the dialogue. So thank you all for coming, and thanks for your questions and the discussion. It was a pleasure and honor for me. Thanks again also to uh, Francisco for inviting me to come here today. Thank you. Can we give a round of applause, please? To our excellent excellencies who asked questions and everyone who participated. And of course, at this juncture, we at the Institute would like to express our sincerest appreciation to our guest lecturer today for accepting our invitation uh, through a giving of a simple token, one of FSI's publications, Facets of Faces, and a certificate of uh, appreciation. May read the citation, the Foreign Service Institute, Department of Foreign Affairs awards this certificate of appreciation to His Excellency, Dr. Andreas Michael Fafanoshka for imparting his valuable insights and knowledge at the Ambassador's Lecture Series, Germany's Interests in the Indo-Pacific Region. Given the 16th day of February, 2024 at the Foreign Service Institute, Pasay City, Philippines. Can we also have a photo opportunity with all the excellen excellencies present in the room? Please. Danke. Just two short announcements. FSI is committed to continual improvement. There is a QR code for a short evaluation survey at our brochure. Please do express your honest and generous feedback. The next session of the Ambassador's Lecture Series will be on March 22, Friday, same time here, with, of course, our Excellency here from Thailand to discuss his chosen topic on Thailand-Philippines bilateral relations with His Excellency Tul Tri Sorat, Ambassador of the Kingdom of Thailand to the Philippines. He will be here next month. So with this, kindly partake of the simple refreshments outside of the library. See you again next month. This is the Ambassador's Lecture Series, a meeting of excellencies, lifelong learners, and friends. Thank you all. Have a great day ahead. Thank you.